The Time Hoppers, Tobias's Gift, A Christmas Story, by Dennis Morrison. Introduction. Professor Collins and his children, Danny and Sharla, have something special they do each year at Christmas time. In fact, it started way before the children were even born, way back when it was just Professor Collins and his wife, Laura. Every year, Professor Collins writes a special Christmas story. Danny and Sharla always look forward to the story. After Danny and Sharla hear the professors, um, take, um, then they take the story to church to read it to the children there. For the last few days, Danny and Sharla heard the professor pounding away at the computer keyboard in his office. They knew he was busy working on this year's story, and they were anxious to hear it. And now, the story. Professor Collins burst from his office and yelled, It's done! Danny and Sharla were putting the last decorations on their Christmas tree. Is it really? Sharla asked. When can we hear it? Danny asked. What's it called? Sharla wanted to know. The professor looked around the living room of Morning Glory Cottage. There was a fire blazing in the fireplace, and the, the tree was decorated and lighted. Danny and Sharla had mugs of hot chocolate, plus one waiting for their dad, on a small table by his easy chair. The professor, story in hand, walked over to his chair and sat down. Why don't I read you the story right now, he suggested. Danny and Charlotte sat on the floor in front of his chair, chins resting in the palms of their hands and bright smiles on their faces. Well, the professor began, the story is called Tobias's Gift. It takes place in Bethlehem, just before the birth of Jesus. But the characters aren't people. They are mice. Charlotte giggled, mice? And then Danny asked, what kind of Christmas story could be about mice, Dad? Well, the professor replied, just sit back and listen while I read to you about Tobias's Gift. All day long, Loretta Mouse had been cleaning her little home behind the boards that made up the wall of the barn she and her children lived in. She knew something special was going to happen very soon, but she had no idea what it was. Whatever it is, she thought, I want this house to be fit even for a king to see. Early in the day, Loretta Mouse had sent her young son Tobias out to play with his friends so he wouldn't be underfoot. She didn't have to worry much about him because he was a good mouse, and Tobias hardly ever got into any trouble. Loretta had kept her daughter home to help her with the cleaning. Together, Loretta and Marcy swept and they mopped and they dusted. <clears throat> then, they snuck out near the manger and gathered fresh straw to make their beds. By the time they were finished, Loretta was pretty happy with all the cleaning she and Marcy had done. She went to the cupboard and took out some grains of, and cheese for supper. She placed them on the table, which Marcy had already set. Their dishes were very small, broken toys that had been thrown away. Tobias and Marcy had fetched them home from Sheol, the local dump. Loretta sometimes thought that her children were more pack rat than mouse. They were always bringing home treasures that had to be thrown out. Today was to be no different. Just as supper was placed on the table, Tobias burst through the door and was excited. And he said, Mom, sis, guess what I found today? It's so cool, and I want you to have it, Mom. From his pocket, Tobias took out a small white jar made of alabaster. He took off the lid and held it out for his mother to smell. Marcy also sniffed her little pink nose. My goodness, Tobias, what a find. It smells wonderful, his mom said. Surely this ointment must have gotten thrown out by mistake. Marcy exclaimed, it must be very expensive. Loretta Mouse replaced the lid, then set the jar on a shelf in the cupboard. We'll save it for a special time. It's a good thing the Roman soldiers didn't see you with that. They would have taken it from you for sure. Stupid Romans, Tobias exclaimed with a mad voice. They take everything. It's time we kick them out of Israel for good. Well, it isn't that easy, Tobias, his mother said. Well, anyways, what's for supper tonight, Mom, Tobias asked, rubbing his tummy. Marcy complained, same old thing, grains and cheese. And then Loretta complained, well, blame that on the Romans, too. They take so much in taxes that no one can afford to throw out much good food for us, he find. But there is hope. Both children looked up at their mom, and Marcy asked, Hope? What kind of hope, Mom? Yeah, what kind of hope, Tobias echoed. The prophets of the Jews have told of the coming of a Savior who will free his people from the Romans. Not only is he God, but he is also the Son of God, <clears throat> their mom said. Tobias shrugged his shoulders. So what? God is for people. We're just mice that get kicked by people and, and scare old ladies. They act so goofy when they see one of us. Marcy laughed. That old Judith, she jumped right up on her table screaming when she saw me last week. <laughs> Am I really that ugly, Mom? 
Loretta patted her daughter on the head and gave her a tender smile. You're not ugly at all. You're beautiful. And Tobias, God is for everyone that lives. Don't forget, he created us before he made the people. Then Loretta told them, It says in God's holy word that he told the earth to bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind. I remember that story, Mom, Marcy exclaimed. It wasn't until after God made us that he made man. And what a mess they made of things, huh? Tobias smiled. I understand now, Mom. God loves us because he created us too. The three of them sat down at the table. Tobias gave thanks to God for their food, and, and then they ate quietly. Now, for mice in ancient Israel, there wasn't a lot to do once the sun went down. After eating, Loretta, Marcy, and Tobias curled up in their little straw beds and fell asleep. But sleep did not last long, because there was a, this was his most special night. About an hour after darkness had settled over Bethlehem, the three little mice heard a commotion in the barn, and they quickly ran to their little mouse hole door and looked out. The chubby innkeeper, to whom the barn belonged, stood holding up a lamp and explaining, I'm sorry, this is all I've got. You can sleep here, but it isn't very comfortable, I'm afraid. But at least it's dry and kind of warm. The man looked at his wife, who was close to time for having a baby. He handed the innkeeper some coins and said, This will do nicely, sir. Thank you for at least putting us up in here. The keeper smiled and handed the coins back. Keep this. Let it be my gift to the little one who will soon be born. I'm sorry there isn't a better place for you and your wife. When the innkeeper had gone, the young woman said, Joseph, it's going to happen soon. Our son, the son of God, he's going to arrive tonight. Joseph um, said as he gathered straw together, I'll make a place to try and keep you comfortable, Mary. He then laid his robes on the straw so Mary would have a place to lay, a place to give birth to the most special child ever born. Loretta looked on with awe as she told Tobias and Marcy, do you, do you know, <clears throat> do, you, <clears throat> do you know who that baby is? Who that baby will be? She called him the Son of God. He'll be the King. The King is who he'll be. The King who will set all creation free is going to be born here tonight, Loretta exclaimed. And Marcy, with a huge smile, said, Come on, Mom, let's go and take a closer look. No, let's wait right here until the King is born. Then we must have a gift for him. Oh, what do we have that would be good enough to give a newborn King? And Tobias looked up and said, I know what to give him. How about the jar of ointment that I gave to you, Mom? Oh, what a wonderful idea, Tobias. As soon as he is born, we will take it to Mary, his mother said. I just hope we don't scare her like I, they did the widow Judith, Mercy laughed. Look, Loretta exclaimed, look at how the animals are gathering to see the king when he is born. She won't be afraid of us because the son she'll give birth to, he actually created us long ago. Because he's God, right, Mom, Tobias asked. That's right, Tobias. <clears throat> It wasn't long, and they heard the cry of a newborn baby, the Prince of Peace. Loretta, Tobias, and Marcy all had tears in their eyes at the sound of the newborn king crying. Quickly, Tobias, Loretta ordered, go get the jar of ointment. We'll take it to the baby Jesus. Can I give the gift to Mary, Marcy asked? No, Loretta replied. Tobias found it, so he should give it to her, but we'll go with him. Tobias fetched the small jar made of pure white alabaster, and then together they walked out of the little hole in the wall and towards Joseph, Mary, and the precious little baby Jesus. Joseph looked down at the three small mice. With a beaming smile, he told Mary, Look, Mary, here are three more of God's creatures come to see the king, and look, one has a gift. Mary lowered her hand to the straw on the floor, and little Tobias crawled up on her palm and placed the gift there. Loretta and Marcy joined him, and together they crawled up on the manger where they could get a good look at the Son of God. Look, Mom, isn't he the most beautiful baby you ever saw, Marcy said, eyes wide in amazement. He sure is, sweetheart. Then Loretta, Loretta added, We have given our gift. Now let us go so that the baby and his mother can rest. After one last look, the three began to walk away. Joseph stepped up to them and swept them up in his large, strong hands. You must not go so quickly, little ones. Joseph placed them in the manger at baby Jesus' feet. The three of you have shown great humbleness by coming with this gift. Now you will sleep here tonight and help keep watch over the baby son of God. Loretta, Tobias, and Marcy never expected such a great honor. They curled up by the feet of the king and fell into a sound sleep by their creator. As he yawned, Tobias reached out and placed his front paw on the Savior's foot, and he whispered softly, 
I love you, baby Jesus, and thank you for loving us. Professor Collins sat the story down and took a sip of his cho hot chocolate. So what do you think, kids? Did you like the story? Well, I'd like to have been there with Marcy, Charlotte said, adding, imagine being able to sleep at the feet of your Savior. And Danny said, and I would have made a great Tobias. I would have marched right up to the king with that gift. And Professor Collins smiled. Glad you both liked it. Sunday we'll see how the kids in junior church like it. But for now, it's late. We should be off to bed. I have an idea, Dad, Danny said. Let's go up and get our sleeping bags and sleep right here in front of the fireplace tonight. Oh, what a great idea, Danny, Charlotte agreed. And with that, the professor giving the nod of okay, they got their sleeping bags and settled down before the warmth of the roaring blaze while the cold, cold wind blew outside of Morning Glory Cottage. <laughs>